In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by our listeners. In fact, if you want to ask us a question to answer on an episode like this one, go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media, post the question under the QA, that's Q U A H, uh, meme. And if we like it, we'll pick it and we'll answer it. Now, in this episode, we also did an introductory portion where we talked about current events. Uh, we talked about our lives. Uh, we mentioned a few studies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode so you know where to find what you want to listen to. We start out by talking about a sport in Florence called Calcio Storico. This is a crazy sport. The manliest sport I've ever seen. Insane. Then we talked about satellite cells. These are cells in the body that have uh, particular responsibilities, and people who seem to be hyper responders to exercise seem to have more of these. Then we talked about the importance of a meat thermometer. Ooh. I discovered the other day that a meat thermometer so helps about me where you put it, Sal. make food way better. Um, I did cook tri-tips last night. We all enjoyed them. They were grass-fed tri-tips from ButcherBox. Now, ButcherBox takes grass-fed, high-quality meat, delivers it to your door at better prices than you'll find anywhere. And, of course, the quality is exceptional. That's why we're working with them. Now, because you're a Mind Pump listener, you get a hookup. Now, ButcherBox has had tremendous demand with all these restaurants closing down, but they're currently allowing people to get on their wait list. So what you got to do is got to go to ButcherBox.com forward slash Mind Pump, get on the wait list, and hopefully within a couple weeks, they'll let you know when it, they're ready and they can start delivering meat to your door. Uh, then we talk about Lululemon and how they bought the company Mirror for half a billion dollars. That's insane. Whew. Then we talked about Facebook losing a ton of ad revenue because they're not doing enough uh, censoring on their platform, apparently. Mm. Then we talked about the Anytime Fitness I Can't Breathe workout. People took it the wrong way, apparently. It's kind of crazy. Then I talked about COVID immunity. A couple studies, uh, one out of Sweden and one out of Germany, shows that we may be closer to he herd immunity than we think. And then we talked about one of our listeners who has resolved their psoriasis by about 80%. So 80% of the psoriasis was gone because they used red light therapy. Now, we work with a company called Juve. They make the best quality red lights you'll find anywhere. These are the ones that are used in the studies. There's a lot of fake crap out there that it definitely Lots shines a red light on stuff. you, but it's not going to give you the same results. Now, red light therapy improves your skin. It also improves things like stretch marks, wrinkles, and of course, issues like psoriasis. Studies support this. I'm not making this up. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a hookup with Juve. Here's what you do if you want to get that discount. Go to juve.com. That's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get a free MAPS Prime program with the purchase of $500 or more, free shipping, and 0% financing for 12-month or 18-month financing options. Then we got into the questions. This is where we answered the fitness questions. The first one was, what are some of your favorite ways to build the mid-back? The next question was, this person's hands give out when they do pull-ups and deadlifts. How do you get your hands stronger? So we talk about strategies there. Adam told my uh, special move. Ooh, yeah. not good. Special. The third question, uh, this person says, you know, you guys tell us to stay in a certain rep range for about three to four weeks. How long should I stick to an exercise? Like, when do I change up my exercises. And then the final question, this person says, how do I know when it's time to reverse diet? Also, this entire month, MAPS Strong is 50% off. Now, MAPS Strong is a full workout program designed to build your body, speed up your metabolism. It's very, very good for the posterior chain. That's the butt that's the back. There's lots of functional movements in it because it's All strong. The bees. It's strong man inspired. This program is unconventional, but will put muscle and strength on your body. Um, and of course, as a result, you'll get a much faster metabolism, so it's easier to stay lean. Here's how you get 50% off Map Strong right now. Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com, and use the code Strong50. That's S T R O N G five zero no space for the discount. That's the only the one thing that we haven't figured out and we haven't mastered is what to tell the wives 
like the as our excuse to get away for work for like four or five hours. Like they're right now they're getting to see like oh wow they just they record for like a couple the, hours. Yes, this is not is, a good example. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, this is not good at all. We gotta look more busy. Yeah, all right, let's stay or, in here or, for. Or we need to talk about man, we're getting so behind. This yeah. week. So just, so <laughs> we were only, we've only been able to work for yeah. a couple hours. So everybody keeps saying that you know that's the theme that everyone yeah. needs to stick with right. That's the story we're telling. You know what we'll do we'll just stay in here for a couple hours after we're done. Okay, yeah. so that they have no idea. <laughs> like, it's too hot in here, dude. It does get a little yeah. warm in here, doesn't it? <clears throat> It's, it's all right, though. I got my shirt on. Oh, we just That's got the true. blinds. You see? Oh, I see those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to put those up, block some sunlight. Did you see, sunlight? Doug, if the uh, measurements were right? Yeah, they're perfect. Oh, good job, Justin. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, although we made them cut the wrong ones first. What do you mean? Well, D Justin sent over Doug the measurements, you know. Uh, for the blinds. Yeah, but there's no W for width or L for length. Mm. Oh, because I always go height and width, so that was assumed. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. standard. What everybody yeah. does. It is so, <laughs> Is so, it what everybody does? I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure either. Height and width. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin by far is the most handy. So well, that's I, I fine. Trust that's him. how that's how every contractor I've worked with. Yeah, he's it. like, you didn't get my contractor lingo, yeah. huh, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, she cut two blinds. Well, you, you and, text uh, me and then, and then had to toss them away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he, measured it, he measured it in metric, in metric <laughs> not imperial. <laughs> well, that's the world. <laughs> the whole world does it that way. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man! Well, hey, at least I got my shirt on though. Yeah, That's cool. What is uh, that? Looks like a cleanup shirt, dude. No, dude. <laughs> Clean up from what? Yeah, yeah. was that yeah. under your bed? Did you find it today? Every, every anybody who's watching video right now could see that. They knew exactly what I meant when I said that's a cleanup. This isn't shirt. a. a oh, jizz. Yeah. This is not a jizz shirt. Whoa! Go, oh, hey, shirt. hey, Just language. Yeah. It's uh. So I'll tell you why. I have, by the way, you see the holes in the back of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's uh it's been around for a while. Yeah. So here's like the story. Decades. Do you guys remember like there's like a few episodes ago where I told you guys how um when I was in high school, if somebody complimented me in something, yeah. I just wear it all the uh, time. Somebody told you they look good in that. I, I think I had like two or three compliments in this shirt. So it's, it's, <laughs> this thing's never <laughs> getting thrown away. <laughs> so, no, you did it. It's made it like three it, decades. It hides my weak body parts and it, <laughs> <laughs> and it highlights my strong body parts. <laughs> I got That's big why I wear vests. Cover everything. Yeah. Yeah, but the shoulders are dark. That's what it's all about, man. I heard you. So you're saying you're trying to do some hypertrophy for your arms now, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like spot it, reduction is. What that's you the thing. It's, it, you know, <laughs> it's it's, it's the summer of guns. You know, it's it, you, you got to wear the tank top. You got to be able to pull it off. He doesn't so. want to have fat arms. Yeah, yeah I just don't want like one big blob like I usually. Did have. you see the picture? I did. Did you not see the picture? Of the, I got to show you this picture. What, what is it? Uh, so we were in the raft and. Uh, Courtney took a picture <laughs> yeah. of all of us. And did, I saw. I saw you didn't use that one, Adam. Yeah, no, it was too intimidating. Yeah, for this you. guy right here. He's. I guess Courtney and him must have had something like like a sign or something like, "Hey, listen, when we go rafting, three, today, two, one, one go." Point, at one point, I'm going to take a photo of everybody, and <laughs> yeah. then I want you to flex as hard as you can. <laughs> yeah. So, so and Very obviously, only you two guys think about shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I wait till I show or you. Or delights so. good. Hey, yeah. hey, babe. Uh, you know it's time. No, no, no. Wait till <laughs> I'm going to show you. Look at, look at, you ready? Are you ready yeah, for this? Yeah, yeah, look at, see. hey, me see. tell me that's not planned. That's planned, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, dude, he look good. He does uh, look good, though, right? Wow. Too good, I couldn't post it. I didn't that's even a... post that because it's like, yeah, whatever. You didn't post this? No. Because he, should... he knew I was going to come with it. That's, that's why. Bro, that's, you, need more, you need more followers. <laughs> no, post <I'm>, this. <laughs> maybe I will do that. Everybody can see what time it is, dude. I think you're right. Holy cow. You know what's funny? Last yeah. night we were talking about, because uh, we were talking about the muscle potential calculator that we have. Mm-hmm. And you know it, it tells you what your potential is based off of an algorithm that's based <laughs> off how, of how much Doug's been we, slacking. We seriously it. like deflated well, all of Doug. Well, and Doug, Doug's one. been in a bad mood since. Yeah, I know. And, and so I'm, I'm totally like uh, like not living to my potential either. No, so. you're not, because apparently you could be massive. Yeah. But I but last night we were hanging out with the kids and we were you know we're all eating dinner and stuff and we're talking about like what's the heaviest you ever got or whatever. Yeah. Do you know Justin hit like two over two fifty? Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I thought, I thought you it was you that. and I with the heaviest. No? I guess not. I got up to 235, maybe. I know yeah. you got up into the mm -hmm. 240s. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was 250, 255. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot, yeah. dude. I was telling Sal, like, I, it was hard for me to breathe. Like, I, <laughs> I was just, like, just sitting, like, was hard. And then I, I couldn't move. I couldn't move left to right. I had to just go straight. So I was like, <laughs> I had no athleticism anymore. It was like, okay, coach. Like, I, they, they wanted me to gain all this weight because I was an inside backer. Because I used to play outside and then strong safety and then they're like you need more size because everybody in the league is like you know 350 plus like coming down you know trying to, to mow you over and so you need to get more size we need you to really put it on this summer and so i was eating and you know working out but i was like totally gaining just just blobs of fat so you got everywhere to, hold on you get up to 255 over a summer 
How much weight did you yeah, gain in that summer? Yeah, no, the, from He's all from the down. off season <laughs> through to the next season. Now, wow. do you, do you so remember? how much did you gain though? I want to know. How, I gained how... okay. So normally I rested about two twenty. Right. Yeah, that's that's about my comfort pounds. zone. So yeah. thirty pounds. Yeah, over, over the summer. So do you remember? So now I remember when I when I bulked up to two forty. I remember like there were staple meals that like helped me get there. That mm. had to be. Do you remember like staple things you were eating? That well, get... this is when we were talking about like uh, those those like cytomass gainers oh, and yeah. like shakes and so. I would do that, and I would do like four raw eggs. I would blend with them, and then I would do peanut butter, and it was just like the most disgusting, like calorie dense uh, shake that I could possibly handle in the morning. And then my stomach would just be destroyed through practice. And then I would come back, and I would go to the cafeteria and just eat like all the carbs, like everything, like because that's all they serve in cafeteria. You, you're lucky if you get any kind of meat. It's usually like some really crappy like piece of ham or something. And I would stack as much ham as I could on there. But this is when I was living like on campus, and then I would go out. And I would get uh, some of my friends worked at restaurants, and so I'd go sit there for dinner, and I would like just cram in like huge meals. What with, a with horse! The guys. Yeah, you guys, I, I've shown you guys a picture of me when I was all heavy, right? Didn't haven't I showed yeah, you guys I've seen it. when he got long hair mm-hmm. on top of it? Yeah. Wow, what was I thinking? Gorgeous hair. Go, oh, it's yeah. it, luxurious. Is the word that, <laughs> that you used, I think, the first time you saw it. <laughs> right. But I, I had some staple like meals. A Pantene Pro V commercial. I had some staple meals that I would eat, and um, I mean, I know why now I have certain intolerance because I guarantee I created them. Yeah. Uh, for breakfast. I would get a punch bowl or like a big popcorn bowl and I would fill that with Cheerios and whole milk. So it was essentially a box of Cheerio, Cheerios and milk. Yeah. And then I would have 10 whole egg scramble with cheese. That was just breakfast. Mm. Yeah. Just terrible. I was terrible. eating all kinds of pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and you feel, how much muscle do you think you gained? You gained 30 pounds. Uh, how much of it was muscle though? Let's, let's be honest. It's probably like five pounds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be completely honest. But I, I, bet I, when I, you felt, hit, I felt like shit, dude. I bet if you could make contact though. You'd oh, no. Nobody was pushing me over. That's for sure. Like I was a, a juggernaut. If I got like momentum and I was running straight ahead, nobody could stop me, dude. Dude, well, speaking of, of, of hitting... How crazy! Who was it that was watching the Calcio Storico with me on Netflix? That that, that oh, game in yeah. Florence. I was watching that. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that was yeah. you. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I dude, was watching. Did you watch it? Yeah, yeah, we watched it. Did you? We well, didn't watch the beginning though. Did yeah, you? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. dude, crazy. What crazy a crazy sport, sport, man! Ever. Well, what's crazy uh, to me I is loved that it. they don't get paid. They don't get anything. There's it's no honor. trophy. Yeah, it's just straight honor, bro. It's all. How honor. do we not know about this sport? So I talked about this on the podcast years ago, a long ago. time ago. You long about time it. ago. I didn't know all the details, and then so Netflix has this series. I forgot the name of it, but they're going through different. It's like home uh, field or home game, home or something. turf, home turf, something, something like that. that. It's going through different parts of the world and in different sports that are unique to certain parts of the world. Yeah. And so in Florence, they have this game that literally dates back. You ready for this? The the origins of this game go BC. back 59 BC. Yeah, that's crazy. It was a game amongst gladiators. Now, the way that it's currently being played with the exact rules and everything, exactly as it is now, was in the year 14-something. So it's still hundreds of years ago, exactly the, the way it is now. Don't and they the, wear the same garbs and everything? Same garb and everything. Yeah. And so the way it works is there's I think there's four or five. 27 players on each team. Yeah, and there's there's four districts in Florence. Oh, that's true. Yeah. In order to play for a district, you have to be born there, and you're never you're not allowed to go on any other team. So you it's literally <laughs> region versus region. Yeah. You can't trade players, nothing. Oh, that's badass. You play for the place you live or yeah. whatever. And the goal is to get a ball, look kind of looks like a soccer ball, to the other net by any means necessary. Yeah. So you like drop kick so someone, you body it's slam It's very – uh water polo esque on the ground with no rules, right? So that's the, like the way you can pass and move oh, the right. ball. I can see that. And you throw it in a, in, a, in a net that's like that on the other side. The, obviously, the net's bigger though on this. But then anything goes, and then twenty seven guys on each team. And once Just you knock, the shit out once you <laughs> knock somebody to the ground, which I e could be they a, can't get up until the yeah, plays a punch, over. an elbow, a, a karate chop, whatever you <laughs> you could do, whatever you want, wheel kicks. Yeah, yeah, they have boxers on the team, like there's wrestlers, like, yeah, wrestlers. So once you get the other person down on the ground, they can't get up until a goal is scored. So no. part of the strategy is when there's twenty. Now imagine. You know, 50, 54 people on this Bro, field. This is a gang fight. Yeah, that's what it, it reminds looked, me. Of. It looked just like that. It was almost like you're watching in prison, like two different like teams just smashed. Dude, each other. And, and it was really awesome to watch. It's, yes, it's violent, um, and people definitely everybody gets hurt when they play this. 
but the honor and the respect they had for each other. Right. Like the respect was tremendous. They're mm-hmm. uh, they're shaking hands. They're they're respecting each other. They're not disrespect. There's no poor sportsmanship. The teams themselves, uh, as we're watching it, these dudes are jacked, right? A lot of these guys lift weights. They're really really built and tatted yeah. up or whatever, and their faces are a little bit scarred or whatever. So they're like arm around each other and they're hoo, 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 you know they're doing this chant or whatever yeah. and courtney's watching like silent she's just yeah. eyes focused on it she yeah. goes this is the most manly thing i've ever seen <laughs> and i was laughing so hard man like, no wonder Je- jessica and courtney that. were very quiet yeah. watching this yeah. <laughs> yeah. they were very happy watching this oh yeah, yeah yeah i used that energy yeah. later so. but, but, yeah. but cra- <laughs> <Did you> really- <laughs> Of course. I'm an opportunist. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babe, let's go upstairs. Yeah, let's wow. go. Play. What's it called? Colesco? Or yeah. it called? No, no, it's a <laughs> couch show story. Yeah, right. Get this yeah. ball to the other net, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Any means necessary, babe. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's how we're going to play this. Anyway, pretty crazy. Yeah. Dude, there was a, a study that was recently done on uh, – we'll talk about fitness now for a second – on uh, groups of lifters, and the, the thing that they were studying was uh, how fast – people respond to resistance training. It was a pretty large group. You know what they found? Mm. So this was a 12-week stu- uh, week study. 25% of the group would be, could be labeled non-responders. So wow. full, a full quarter of, of people in that category or whatever or in the group were considered non-responders. Then uh, I think it was an additional, like maybe 15% were considered uh, super responders. And hmm. then most people were somewhere in the middle. And they broke down and tried to figure out why some were hyper responders, why some weren't. What they found in the hyper responders is they had more satellite cells uh, present in muscle. Satellite cells kind of uh, orchestrate and tell the, the muscles to adapt. Apparently, they found that to be the big one of the big reasons why some people hyper respond. Now they didn't control protein intake, they didn't control diet and that kind of stuff. Part of me wonders if twenty, if it's the real statistics are that twenty five percent of them don't eat enough calories. Mm. And that may be the the reason why they didn't respond. Yeah, how did they tease? Did they tease all that stuff out? They didn't control for some of that stuff. Hmm. Interesting, though, right? Yeah. No, if yeah. you if you get let me ask you guys a question as trainers. Let's say you took a hundred, uh, you know, uh, dudes between the guys between the age of twenty and thirty, you know, normal hot, you know, health and all that stuff, and you trained them all, hundred of them. Mm-hmm. What percentage of them would you say are the slow responders, and what percentage would you say are the high responders? I would say there's a very it, close comparison, right? Mm-hmm. I think uh, it would be as rare for me to see a a, a non-responder to a like super hyper responder. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, I would say that I, a majority of people that yeah, I Yeah, those are the outliers for yeah, sure. And, yeah, I would think it's probably pretty close, you know? I, I think for every person that I met that like just nothing, they didn't respond to anything, uh, for every one of those, I would say I probably knew somebody who like touched weights or just thought about working out and built muscle. I would right? agree. I've trained a lot of guys that call themselves hard gainers and ectomorphs. And um, 99% of the time, uh, they're neither of those. Uh, maybe maybe natural ectomorphs, but not hard gainers. They just it, needed a different training style. Yeah, Doug, that, Doug thought he was a hard gainer. I did too. Yeah. I, think we all, I, think that, I think that's correct. I think mm-hmm. that a lot of people that, you know, like myself, like you, like Doug, who thought they were hard gainers, just they just didn't have all the pieces. Yeah. And, and I think why you feel like you are one is because you have friends who you know don't put nearly the effort that maybe you're putting in and they respond and so i think it's it's just you weren't doing what your body needed right you know what i think a big part of it is is cuz i've been you know i've been writing a lot of articles and stuff they're not up yet but we're going to be putting up a what's called a pillar page soon where you can learn all about a particular subject this one's going to be about hard gainers or people who find or or who people who consider themselves Hard gainers. I think one of the biggest, besides programming, because that's a big one, right? If you don't work out right, it's going to be hard to build muscle. But besides that, a big one is people who consider themselves hard gainers oftentimes are just have really fast metabolisms. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this, the research I've been doing, which totally uh, backs up my experience, is that the average quote unquote hard gainer needs to eat about 22 calories per pound of body weight before they start gaining weight. So to put that into perspective, a 150-pound man who which is tiny is, is, you know, needs to build, who says they're a hard gainer, would need to consume 3,300 calories. That's a lot. That's a ton. That's that a was, ton of food. That was the, the number one thing for me was that. Totally. Like, I, I totally underestimated. And here's the thing. What you tend to do is, because I thought until I started tracking, I was like, I know I have these, mat- I just had Taco Bell with all this. And I was like, yeah. that's 5,000 calories. But then I would go. 
you know, 48 hours and only have, you know, 1,200 calories. Mm -hmm. So it would, it would end up averaging way too low, and I just was not consistently hitting right. that. When yeah, I, you had it all in one sitting. Yeah, yeah. once I and, – and I also – Because you felt stuffed. Right. Yeah. And then I also, I also gravitate towards – you know, high intensity type sports. I mm -hmm. love the the wakeboarding, the snowboarding, the playing basketball outside for hours. Yeah. Like, so I was extremely active and very inconsistent, inconsistent with eating enough calories. And when I reduced the amount of activity that I was doing, I was consistent with increasing my calories. I, at this point, I still don't even have programming yeah. down well. I'm yeah. still learning that. I don't even have that down. But just simply by staying consistent with training and being consistent with eating in a surplus, reducing that, I mean, I that was my first like 15-pound, 20-pound surge of size on my body that I had had. My yeah, I wonder, thinking back, uh, my brother and I both, at the same time, we're trying to put on muscle, and we were both really into sports. He was taller than me, 6'3", uh, and, you know, was pretty much more of the ectomorph, like fast metabolism, all this stuff, but he didn't really, you know, force himself to keep eating like I was doing, and also, I did more anaerobic activity. So I lifted weights and I didn't do quite as much uh, conditioning and uh, and running and stuff like he did. So it was just interesting. I wonder if, if he would have had the same kind of response if he totally shifted it around what dude, I was doing. Dude, I'll put it, I'll make it the perspective even more clear, right? So I just said, and this is what studies show, about 22 calories per pound. So 150 pound male, 3,300 calories. So 3,300 calories consistently now, this is what you would need to eat on a consistent regular basis. Over the course of a week, that's 23,100 calories, right? So now let's say you're this guy and you want to build muscle and you're like, okay, I heard on Mind Pump I got to eat, you know, 22 calories per pound. I'm 150 pounds, 3,300 calories, no problem. So you do that Monday through Friday, right? Five days a week. That's 16,500 calories. Saturday and Sunday come along and, you know, you're out with your friends or you're doing a few things and, oh, oh you eat a couple big meals, and now you ate a total of 2,000 calories on Saturday and 2,000 calories on, uh, on, on Sunday. You're now at, for the week, 20,500 calories. You're 3,000 calories under, for the week, yeah. what you need to gain muscle mass. Yeah. So although wow. five days a week, which is most of the time, mm -hmm. and especially if you're putting effort into it, your perception is, I'm totally doing everything I can. Why isn't this working? Because you don't understand that Saturday and Sunday – you were off by you know fifteen hundred calories, which is easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really easy to do when you're eating thirty three hundred calories a day, or that's your target. It just doesn't come out. And that same thing for me, Adam. It was like I thought I ate a lot, or I thought I was doing it right, but when I started to really pay attention, I realized that it, weekends I would screw up because you know you wake up late, so you can get you know the extra meal that you have in the morning, or you're out with your friends, you know, riding your bikes or whatever. You don't realize that you're skipping an extra meal, or and then dinner comes and you eat a big dinner, so you think you made up for it. But you actually, you actually didn't. Right. And I think that's probably a big reason. Right, right. So I caught myself I last night watching uh, another stupid show on Netflix. But this one actually like hooked me a little bit. Have you ever seen the Married at First Sight? I guess there's been like Dude, eleven seasons or I something did watch, crazy. I did watch that. Yeah, it was like I was like, oh god, it's another one of these that I was like watching it to kind of evaluate each person, which is something I know. Like Adams mentioned, you do that sometimes with Katrina. Yeah. Sometimes me and Courtney will do that. We'll kind of like see, uh, you know, what people are coming in with and why you know they're still single and like what's going really going on you know underneath all this stuff but uh they actually spend a lot of time going through like their apartment and their house picking through all their stuff and they get they collect all this data on each person and basically like they do this whole psych eval and then they have another lady who's like a sex therapist and also like a, a marriage therapist who like will ask really tough questions about like what you like are open to sexually what you like are looking for for all this and then they have another guy that's like a, a, a you know minister who's who's talking about religion and like what's the most important thing it's like all the hardest questions that you like most couples rarely get to which i thought was interesting because but then they like they they basically pair them for them and, and then they, they get married they don't see him until they get married that day I was like, uh, "What the fuck? Who's going to sign so that up?" That was kind of like that other show, right? It was yeah, like they, that. They, yeah. they meet each. They get a 
they talk yeah. and they can't see each other. Yeah, so they yeah. learn all about but each other. But this one, they have the therapist and they have the- But this one is a little more like Dude, they're I, they're trying to make it- Can yeah, I tell you I, how much I hate these shows? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, watch them. I, you know what? It, it, it sucked me in, dude. I'm telling you, it's it's uh, candy. That's what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's processed like this, food Yeah, it's the process. Yeah, it's a processed food of TV. It's yeah. you're not getting- You know what I hate about it, though, is that they trivialize marriage so much. Yeah. Do you know what they're coming out with? So like, it's like, how far could you go, right? The old dating shows were like- you're gonna meet and go on a first date, and people. It's like that's okay, that's that's reasonable. Then it became like we're gonna get engaged. Like whoa, all right, I think we're pushing it, but yeah. let's see what they still have time before they get married, you know. So let's see. What, now it's like we're gonna get married. So you know what they came out with a new show? Mm. People are gonna get paired to have a kid. No way. Yes, dude. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the show, but I watched it. It was like a trailer. That's a horrible for it. idea, dude. Whoa. Like how much are we gonna trivialize like getting married and starting a family? You know no, what it's mean? crazy. It it was weird because it. I was wondering, I'm like, is this like a, a thing that, like a trend that's happening because everybody's has all this access to, to dating whoever, whenever, you know, but nobody's really committing to anybody anymore, you know? And so like, that's like sort of the, the taboo thing now. It's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to lock it in. Well, maybe that's why these shows are doing so well too, right? Because we keep the, the age of marriage keeps getting pushed out, pushed out, pushed out, and less and less people are getting married earlier. Mm-hmm. And so maybe it's just that it's now interesting. If you're 25 years old, I ain't going to get married. But I'm definitely mm. interested in to watch other people. Do, yeah, do yeah. I'm wondering what the motivation is. It's just interesting. A lot yeah. more of these shows are popping. I up. just I feel filthy when I watch. You know what I mean? After, <laughs> like, as, after I'm done with it, I'm like, oh man. Right. It's like when you you yeah. say, oh, I'll just have a handful of that bag, and then you exactly the whole bag. <laughs> exactly. Like, dude. Damn it. Process TV, yeah. bro. No joke. Eight hours later, you're like, fuck. No or a whole bag later. No joke. Jessica and I will watch like one or two episodes, and then we'll both look at each other, and you can tell we're both like, oh, and then we'll be like, put a yeah. documentary on. We yeah. need to like something like, where I can learn. This shit yeah. That we're just, like, that we're just <laughs> Do it anyway. It's good yeah. time. Do you guys? Uh, what did you guys think about the dinner we made the other night? Excellent. Oh, was, yeah? That was, yeah, yeah. It was super tasty. So, I loved. I loved how Jessica marinated. It was really good. Yeah. She so was, uh, yeah, what was that? Me, she was schooling me on it uh, today. Yeah. Oh, what was she telling it you? It was. A, it was like a. a it was a Costco seasoning. Yeah. It was a Costco not non salt uh, rub, and then she un, and, and then garlic, and then um and then something else she had on there. But she, it was real basic. I, yeah. I told her it tasted like a Santa Fe marinade. Well, she does it early in the day, and then you're supposed to leave it. <laughs> right all day oh, was, and then it was, it was fully awesome. marinates so there. it was the it was the butcher box tri-tip which is good it's amazing oh you've uh, been eating that like crazy i love it i love their mm-hmm. tri-tip it's grass-fed but it tastes it tastes close to grain fed it's got that nice marble whatever mm-hmm. you know flavor to now it now i asked katrina did you guys cook that in the oven and then you sear it on the barbecue did you cook the whole thing on the barbecue no you sear it and then you do in the oven so here's the okay, thing okay i thought so i was like yeah. it was too perfectly cooked i told her i was like I was yeah like, i don't think sal cooked this in the barbecue no this so like- here's the thing though um here's the difference i've never you guys are gonna make fun of me never used a meat thermometer before really i started using one recently <laughs> oh, yeah. why the oh, hell yeah. haven't i used one before <laughs> yeah, it's like, well some people think it's like cheating a barbecue like, Fuck yeah, that. yeah it makes it it's good it comes no, out I, 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 I go back and forth with it i use it every now and then i love it because yeah. you know what i used to do the stupid thing where you touch your finger and you, that's the oh that means firm that means uh, if it's firm i just kind of well yeah, done. i can push i just know because of time you know the, the amount of time you're cooking all these types of meats it's just it's one of those things no, you man, pay you're attention. a man's man that's yeah i know it i know what i'm doing i feel so i'm a grill master <laughs> just, he talks in he talks in construction when it comes yeah. to what he's, uh, he's, he's like, oh you don't know the first one's high yeah, you need a you need a let, let me ask you a you question for me yeah so one of them is obviously longer well, so okay that was me who put that together like doug it was like, like doug, doug's reading you didn't it, think about that and then i'm like listening okay. to it and i go wait a second i was like yeah. you know they're all one size and i'm like 49 i'm like and they're windows I was yeah, like, they're unless they're like wide yeah. like this yeah i was like i know those windows aren't that wide oh, talking about this. so today, today at home depot yeah on yeah. there so well, hey it got done right done. anyway it got done that's right it yeah, got it, worked done. Out. it got done we're here with the right the right blinds <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, i should have right. gone with you guys all right. Right. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. the meat thermometer game changer yeah. highly recommend people use those everyone's like uh yeah i know i know people give it where you been i got something did you guys see uh lululemon I saw this. Mere five hundred million. Half a billion dollars. Wow. Half a billion dollars. CEO. Were they even profitable? So okay, no, well, no. They were that's evaluated. Crazy. They were evaluated though. Uh, the first year, uh, I, I want to say like twenty five million. Then they they skyrocketed to a hundred million. 
Obviously, they got, you know... Was it just because they closed all these contracts to go into places? Or, like, how how were they getting that high of a valuation? Probably by how fast it was scaling. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, at the rate that it was scaling. Scaling from 25 to $100 million in a one, one year's time. And I'm sure they were on that pace again. Right, to probably, started projected it. Right, now, what do you guys think Lulu's going to do with it? Because now Lulu's in the exercise market. Right, so they, they kept, weren't before. Well, really. so what they did, which I think... A, a brilliant acquisition, by the way, too. I think this is a, a really, really cool move and oh, interest, interesting. What a great way to sell their clothes well yeah right totally and and also just get analytics on this many people right so that's what really mirror is a tech company is is what they are and they're smart enough too that they kept the ceo right so the creator of mirror is not only sold for her 500 million or whatever and supposedly that's like what like estimated 180 million to her she also gets to stay on as, as ceo and then report to the CEO of Lou Lemon, so she keeps probably a very high-paying job with, I'm sure, all kinds of perks and steering the company in the mm-hmm. direction they want. I think they just saw it was aligned really, really well, and they're you know two two great companies. And Lulu has really been struggling. So Lulu, after uh, the whole COVID thing, um, they took a huge hit. Hmm. So they were not selling as much with stores being closed. It's one of those. Well, was, this is smart then, right? Yeah, this is very yeah, smart. Allows move. them to get into people's houses and, yeah. and acquire a bigger. Now, audience, is the mere audience mostly women, or is it split down the middle? I don't know the analytics on. on they, I would assume that they're they have a larger female market for Lulu to spend half a billion on. I know Lulu makes men's clothes too, but their big market is women. I would I would assume that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I think any sort of group or class or virtual class is probably i mean even gym world gym world 60 i'd say 65 to 70 percent of our clientele it was it was female yep right yep, so yep. majority and some trainers were higher obviously some lower but i mean for the most part i'd say the high 60s to 70 percent was uh the clients that we train and that's in the gym and mm-hmm. i and, and i think when you talk about classes peloton Group classes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think women the women dominate that market. I think the at so. home workout market definitely is a it's a larger female market. For part of sure, it, part of it being comfort. Um, still, I still hear people women say that they feel less not as comfortable working out in gyms. The other part is that you know you probably want the convenience of being able to do something at home. Right. Um, but. This is interesting. Half a billion dollars for that kind of a, a fitness tech company. Well, they obviously see their, you know, the, the need to get into people's homes because of mm. everything that's gone on. Right. right. I think that I think it was kind of I don't know. I have no idea how long they were courting them for, but yeah. it does seem like a move in response to what happened with COVID. Like they yeah. started like someone said, "Hey, we got to do something about this," and saw an opportunity. Well, speaking of tech, It'd be companies, interesting to watch them. Did you guys see what happened to Facebook? Oh, huge oh yeah, Who I saw. Coke? I saw Starbucks, oh. Coke. I think Hershey's. Hold maybe? on, hold on a second. It took this f- over four hundred companies. Whoa, I thought yeah. there was just three. No, over four hundred companies: Adidas, Ben and Jerry's, uh, Blue Bottle Coffee, Adidas Chibani. Is, Adidas is under fire right now. Coca Cola, Blue Shield. I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at Eddie Bauer, Ford, Hershey, Honda. Like, I'm, there's there's tons and wow. tons of companies. That pulled from Facebook. Did you hear why? So okay, that's what I want to know why. Because here's what's interesting to me, right? Yeah. Because uh, just so you know, too, Adidas is under fire right now. The the, why? C- the CEO just stepped down. Stepped out. She made a comment about the whole uh, everything that's going on with George Floyd and racism. As, what did she say? As noise, like they really didn't do anything. They were they didn't take any action, like uh, about what was going on. And I think she tweeted at one point that referred to all of it as noise, mm. and and they she just Boom. got oh yeah she got lambasted for dude that. And so I'm pretty, and it, it, she it, she wrote out the statement uh you know s- but it was like one of those total you know you remember when uh, people used to leave the company back in the days right where it's like this formal like thank you for the opportunity it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but really behind closed doors like you need to get the fuck out yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, we cannot have you working we're gonna here. have you say this and you're gonna step over here and you're yeah, gonna get paid yeah. and you're out of here well yeah. so the, these companies are saying that they're criticizing Facebook for not doing enough to rein in racist and violent content and oh, misinformation. Wow. So now here's the thing. This is why I think social media companies what? are about, hmm. and I've been I've been talking about they're going to see a mass exodus, and I think they're about to get hammered as well because social media companies are protected because they get treated like phone companies. Like you, you know, like you call someone on the phone. You can't sue the phone company for something that I say. They're just they're just they just allow people to talk and they don't do anything. Well, social media companies are protected that way, but they're all, but they can't be now because they openly edit their stuff and now they're getting hammered because now that they do edit, now that these companies can say, "Well, you're not doing enough" or yeah. whatever. Now, I find this very interesting because from what I've seen from my own research, 
Facebook has been much, and Twitter have been more openly um, editing conservative points of views right. and not uh, liberal points of views. Now, this is look. I'm non bi I'm I'm, no. I'm I don't sign up for one side or the other. This is just from the research that I've read. This is why they've been. Uh, that they might be brought before Congress to talk about is specifically because of that. So I find it interesting these companies are saying you're not doing enough. Yeah, well, the first sign of it was like the whole Alex Jones uh, hysteria where everybody was trying to block him off of like the because of the misinformation yeah. and things like he was spouting. And so that became like this this question, how are they going to handle instances like this? But yeah, you're right. I've, I've seen a lot more conservative editing and, you know, like people like supporting Trump or whoever on that side of it uh, being eliminated from the conversation. Uh, but it's it, like, so how are they going to handle that in terms of like well, trying to have a balance they are a private company so this this is perfectly fine however um i think they're not they can't they're not protected from being sued anymore well they're also not protected from companies pulling out from advertising well they, they, they weren't before either right right I mean, but now they're not i think now they can get which, sued. honestly i think this is the, that's the best way to handle this I, I i so this is a part of me i like seeing this right oh, so I, do I. I, it's like uh i be, i believe that facebook has the right to, if they want to be a, a hard left company and pull all conservative shit, so be it. Or sure. the opposite. They, Agreed. They, that opens the door for a company to provide. That's how Fox News. You was just wish born. they had that in their policy, so you knew, like, uh, like it was written in well, there somewhere. I just yeah. think they shouldn't be protected from lawsuit. You can't have both. Right. right? You can't yeah. be protected by a law that says that you're, you know, uh, that you don't edit, that you're just like a phone company, and simultaneously have the ability to edit and control information because now you're more like a magazine. Or a newspaper. But I tell you what, I mean, the, the best way to regulate this is exactly what we see is massive companies pulling advertising out and them losing yeah. billions of dollars. I will is say it, is this, it really about that or is it about them not making money and so they're pulling their marketing uh, dollars back? I'll tell you what, dude. I don't no, know. Maybe, no. but I'll you tell think you. That, you think that Hershey, Coca-Cola, not making money yeah, off of advertising on Facebook? Dude, yeah, yeah no. It I, doesn't, I think it's an election doesn't year. doesn't seem like so it. So I think there's going to be a lot of uh, grandstanding. I also, right now, we're in this strange cancel culture uh, thing that's going on where we are using current context to judge past language or content or media and boy do we jump to conclusions and, fast and well not just that but but it's gotten so crazy cuz i'm going to say something right now uh, i don't care who you are nobody will ever nobody can survive that level of scrutiny cuz you could go back 10 or 15 years imagine if somebody recorded every single text and phone call and email and everything that you said 15 years ago, and then with the context of today's acceptable behaviors and words, went back and scrutinized you. You'd be screwed. Everybody would be. Yeah. But this is what they're doing with everything. Yeah. They're, it's starting to get crazy where it's, and nobody will survive this. You can't. Oh, I know. You can't do this because. Well, even people you think are on your team or whatever, then they yeah. go back and they've, like a Jimmy Kimmel, some, something happened with him where like they go way back Dude, and then it's, he's playing a character, but now they cancel him. It's destroying. It's going to be very, very destructive. This, again, nothing will stand this level of scrutiny. It'll turn in on itself as well, and everything's going to get taken out. What we need to do is you need to judge people by what they say, do, and how they behave now. Because the past, things were different. They, there were acceptable language. There was acceptable you know, things of behaving. Now, I'm not talking about crazy stuff. I'm talking about more like you know, how you may refer to somebody, how you may talk about it, lots of different subjects. Like you know, how you refer to... Uh, people of different uh, races, for example, the words that you may use, they may be acceptable one minute, then the next minute they're not acceptable. That's totally fine, but you can't judge what was acceptable 20 years ago with what isn't today and saying, oh, we got to cancel this person. Right. People need to, like, for example, I'll give you a great example. Uh, uh, Barack Obama campaigned in 2008, openly said he did not support gay marriage in 2008. I don't think we should cancel Barack Obama because his current behavior shows that he's very supportive of it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So we got to be very careful with allowing this. To, and right now it's so heightened that you're seeing like like people are just dropping very quick with even the slightest mention of, mm. uh oh, maybe you might have said something wrong or whatever. And of course, there's I think there's cases that are clear. Um, I'm not talking about those ones. Did you um, hear about some, the trainer at the Anytime Fitness with the whiteboard? No. Oh, you didn't hear about no, that. What do you, so it went viral. It's a it's a, a picture of a, a well, workout. It was a workout, right? Yes. The name of the workout? Yes. It's oh, the I Can't Breathe workout? Yes. Yeah. I can't. So, oh, so, now I mean, that's, that's, that's poor taste. Yeah, right? but here's the thing, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. But here's, a, here's, here's what I've heard now from this. And so I guess the, the gym owner uh, originally uh, posted an apology and then pulled it back. 
because after speaking to the trainer, it was supposed to be something done in, in memory to him. It was supposed to be out of respect, not out of something out of disrespect, mm. and it got totally tur- just because somebody took they a picture. They thought they were oh, making wow. fun of it, right? Oh, oh, wow. oh wow! And and instead, it was supposed to be something like in out of respect, not out of like trying to disrespect at all. And oh, yet, that was a big misfire. Oh, well, a total misfire. See that that actually proves what I'm saying. I think no, that, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, I think everybody mm. right now has glasses. Right, where we just, we just want to like, jump right to that and be like, yeah. I can't believe you would say something or yeah. do something like that. That's poor taste. So, and it's like. Is it really though if he was doing it out of support, like yeah. to create, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That's right. Like, like all the wads were, were uh, you know, named after fallen like soldiers, right? Like mm-hmm. some of them at least. So, yeah, yeah. We need to be careful with this, with this movement. And I think there's a lot of people who think exactly like what I'm, what I'm saying. And they're like, hey, chill out a little bit. We're going a little too far with some of the stuff. But the problem is that most uh, people just don't say anything. And so you've got a small group of really pissed off people or looking for certain things, yeah. and they're allowed to just go run amok. And I think that there's a lot of people who are like, okay, it's gone a little too far when we see a you know petitions signed to like take you know Paw Patrol for example off the air, which is a cartoon yeah. about you know dogs. I thought that was, was fake news. Dog. That wasn't fake news. Yeah, there really was a petition, but it was fake news that they were going to cancel it. Uh, right? but, uh, but still, you know what I mean. Let me put it this way: the the, the atmosphere is such that you you hear it that it was believable. Yeah, and you don't yeah. think it's crazy. You know I, I mean? I've been getting a lot of. I mean, for the most part, I've been getting a lot of positive DMs. Have you guys? I yeah. mean, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, people are, you know, uh, more sane than you think. I think there's a lot of stuff going on right now that's, like you said, very loud, a loud minority. Yeah, I think uh, there's a big eruption, and I think that people are now. Well, from what I'm trying to see, at least through my like eyes, is like how we're all trying to kind of piece back together and unify, you know, through all this stuff. So mm-hmm. it's just like it's one of those things. It's just. It, man, it was it was just a massive eruption because of like all these circumstances that happened all at once. It is, and it, to make matters worse, you, the, the the our you know elected leaders will give us information that seems counter, and then it makes you believe all kinds of crazy stuff. For for example, um, with COVID and all the shutdowns, um, and we were told like you go outside without a mask or you don't you go to stores or whatever. Mayor of L.A. said that he would turn off power and water to businesses that were trying to operate and people obviously needed their businesses to operate because they didn't have uh, any way to support themselves um, and then when when you have these mass uh, protests they would they wouldn't say that there was a problem in fact they said it's not a big deal and I get I kind of understand why they said that you don't want to get in the way of a massive protest by you don't want to try and meet it with force I understand that but imagine the message you get when you're a business owner you're like man I lost my business. Mm-hmm. And you're letting you know ten thousand people organize, and you're not stopping them. And I couldn't run my business. Well, did you hear? Uh, yeah. Did you get the news on? Because being a COVID, the counties that are are shutting down in California now. No, they, Nin- they nineteen are being told to, and then there's a lot of people that are vo- a lot of them that are volunteering to. Wow, here are all the counties. Yeah, because you're seeing a spike predictably, yeah, right? So, so nineteen counties in California right now are are pulling no more restaurants again, no more no entertainment, no oh, bars. Here no, we go so, again. Right, Contra Costa. Uh, Fresno, Glen, Imperial, Kern, Kings, Los Angeles, Merced, Orange, Riverside, Sacramento, San Benito, San Joaquin, Santa Barbara, Santa Clara, Solano, Stanislaus, Tulare, and Ventura. Mm. Mm. Whew, well, we are seeing a spike in cases. I, the The death rate doesn't seem to be, or the deaths don't seem to be going up, but we might need to wait a few weeks to see what that looks like. I just read a study that says that uh, COVID herd immunity might be much closer than we than we think. So the antibody test that we do tests, obviously, antibodies specific to this version of COVID. Right. But they did a study in Sweden, and then they did a German study, and they found that people who had other coronaviruses, because there's coronavirus is a category of viruses. There's a lot of different ones, right? Mm-hmm. COVID-19 is a specific type. Just like influenza, there's different versions. Mm-hmm. People who had other coronaviruses had partial or almost full immunity to COVID-19. Oh, wow. So they would get COVID-19, but have no symptoms. Mm-hmm. And they said they saw not antibodies, but they saw a, something else, T-cells. Mm. They saw T-cells that uh, that were activated from the previous coronavirus. So they think that we may actually be have more protection than we think. Wow. Because, you know... Coronavirus has been around for a long time, but we get you know well, that's, we've all had some form. I told you a little bit about when we were when we took uh, our our little uh, dachshund in to get uh, his shots and whatnot. We were talking to the veterinarian, and she was all upset because 
like they've known uh, through because because cats have coronavirus. Obviously, mm. it's a, a different strain, but it's very close to the COVID-19 strain. And they were treating uh, that with with steroids. And it's very similar to the steroids that they found have, have you know, mm. started to work. And this has been information that's been public domain for a long time. But like obviously with animals, you know, but when you're experimenting with these 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 drugs, like isn't that the first place you go mm. is to see what works on animals mm. first? Interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a sh- dude. We got. We also got to give uh, you know credit to the, the health experts. This was fast, like it came on. Yeah, quick. Every, everybody's been working hard. At yeah, it for sure. came on quick, and so information is going to you know they're going to say one thing, and of course it's going to change in a couple months as more information is presented. So we got to remember that, so we don't you know because it's easy for it's easy to lose faith in 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 the people giving us advice and to think mm. that they're they've got bad intentions. It's like well you know I could understand being the scientist on the other side and being like look man. This was fast. We didn't know, you know, two more months, information may change even then. So who knows, man? Who knows what will happen? Hey, I wanted to share some cool news. I got a a DM uh, just the other day about... Somebody had heard me talk about psori- my psoriasis, and I, anytime I like, like I get asked, probably I don't know, at least every other time that I do a qua on the things that like I list off that I have been like the most important. I always say like you know diet for me, sunlight or supplementing with uh, with vitamin D has been uh, also soft water instead of hard water, and then the juve light like yeah. uh, has been a huge help for for that, especially when I'm consistent. And I notice when I'm consistent with it, it, it keeps it down. If I'm inconsistent with it, it kind of flares back up. Um, and they told me that they invested in one about a month ago, and they've been consistently using it three times a week for, for 20 minutes, and it's reduced it by 80%. Wow. Holy moly. I, that's, wow. And for somebody, that's so who's, cool. and somebody who struggles with psoriasis. That's a big deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, 80% reduction in, in the way that the blemishes or scabs yeah. or whatever you want to call them look. That's a big deal. I wish man. I knew about this a while. I had a client who had really bad psoriasis, and she was so um, self conscious about it because it's one of those things that's so visible. It's visible, yeah. You know, um, I wish I, I wish I knew about red light therapy uh, back when I trained her yeah. um, and lost contact with. It was a long time ago, but I remember how self conscious she was. So eighty percent is huge. Yeah. I don't think there's a single drug you can put on it that will do that. Oh, there's there's like so there's steroids and stuff like that, but a lot of it's like. You know, they don't have a lot of research around it. So there's a lot. And that's why. So I used to go to my dermatologist and they would inject this like a, like around it. And it basically like kills off all the bacteria around that. But you're like injecting something like mm. that into your, into your blood, right? I'm like, mm. ah, it's probably something I don't want to do on a regular it's basis. It's just a super strong, uh, like, yeah. t- it like tamps down the immune response is what it's doing. Yeah, essentially. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you have options like that. See, if, that's the thing about the Juve is it doesn't. Um, it doesn't reduce your immune function. It's not. It doesn't uh, ha- tamp it down like yeah, steroids it enhances do. It. If anything, it'll it's an immune booster. But the way it works, it's the best results you get from it are skin stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which includes. And this part, I'm not bullshitting about. You can look this up. There's studies on this. The wrinkles, wrinkles, yep. stretch marks. Uh, you know, improve the, the the appearance of your skin so it looks more youthful. Yeah. And the reason why it does this is because it dramatically increased the amount of ATP that's that's produced in the mitochondria. Well, it's funny you say that because I my old client I used to train. She's always looking at like the latest and greatest Hollywood beauty products. And yeah. I've there's so many now variations of red light, uh, you know, versions like where they have a mask that you can put on. You saw the billions one, right? Oh yeah, they, so they have that, yeah. yeah. And so she actually bought like this, and I'm like, why you buy the blanket? Like, so I'm getting her one of those Juve panels because I'm like, dude, this is the only one that's actually proven, yeah. you know, through all these clinical trials and everything. But yeah, there's blankets, there's like hats, and there's all kinds it's of people, stuff. People, people are catching on. Well, yeah. it, it works. You know, it works. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what it is. It works. And now there now there's an opportunity for a bunch of charlatans to come in and people to you know all make, the tchotchkes and they're making yeah. money off of yeah, one hundred percent. Yep. Yep. First question is from Freeman Axtell. What are some of your favorite ways to build the mid back? Oh, the the good old mid back. Ooh, mid. So a, a well developed mid back. The canals is so underrated. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. You know, we we tend to think of the lats and getting width and all that stuff. Right. But nothing is more attractive than having that nice muscle and definition of the spine mm-hmm. to where Adam called it the canal. Yeah. Where it's it kind of dips in. Goes all yes, the way down. one of the things that I mean, Jessica has got incredible back development. Part of it's because she did um, a lot of silks training, so a lot of climbing and rowing and pulling. But she had this. I just loved her back. I loved the way it looked. I loved the way that line looked. And she had well, ba- well developed mid back muscles. Some of the best exercises for the mid back are rows. 
and row variations. But I'm going to tell you an exercise that blows those away, and I'm learning about it now. Uh, heavy, no joke, heavy trap bar, farmer walks, and deadlifts. Man, that hits my mid-back like nothing. Yeah. And really, I didn't really start doing those on a regular basis until I followed Map Strong. Back when we... When did we write Map Strong? When did we create that? Ooh, a couple years ago. It was a couple years ago. So Robert Oberst is a world's strongest man competitor, massive human being. Um, and we Strong enlisted his help hell. to create a workout inspired by strongmen. I followed the program, and in it are unconventional type exercises like snatch grip deadlifts and zercher squats and trap bar farmer walks. Mm -hmm. And I followed the program. It's the first time I ever did farmer walks, like programmed, where it's consistent every single week. And the, the biggest gains I saw besides my grip strength was my mid back. My mid back just it just I could feel it. I could feel the Well, it's funny. We all kind of noticed that at the same time after going through a few of the workouts for a few weeks. It was like, "Oh my god, my upper back and my my mid back are just torched." Yep. Like it, it hits it so many times and it's it's just one of those things those work sessions. Uh you're always carrying something. You're always like in a you know, your hands are in a position where they're wider than they usually are or you know, you you're you're just grabbing things constantly and it totally uh Adds up uh, over time. All this volume like adds right into your to your back. Well, it makes a ton of sense why that why that is right. Like you that 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 canal or those you know when you get the, the erector spinae and the rhomboids. And yeah, the the, all those muscles support the spine, mm -hmm. and so anything that really challenges uh, you know flexion or extension of the spine or stabilizing the spine. Uh, especially heavily heavy loaded is going to really develop all those muscles mm -hmm. that support that. And so when you think about, obviously for me, deadlift, nothing did it like deadlifting, deadlifting, uh, yeah. just completely changed the way my back looked. And that was one of the things It just gave this new thickness and those, and a just deep canal down the back from deadlifting. And that was the biggest change in my routine, uh, before uh, I noticed that big change. But I would say the the trap bar deadlifts too is because you are I mean you, I mean you could trap bar deadlift or I mean uh, or deadlift or carry you know four plus four hundred plus pounds, you're carrying four hundred plus pounds and moving like that. The amount of stabilization oh, for all those muscles around there. I mean so. I, I think that's a big reason why those oh, those exercises are so picking phenomenal. things up on the ground like shouldering uh, heavy weights like there's all if you just go through and you look at all these exercises like your your back is so essential in that process of of lifting something off the ground and pulling it up into your chest uh, you know and it's just it, it does wonders for your mid back to yeah. me that's that's the real sign of a strong back too right so some people look at backs and they they get they get impressed by the the wingspan mm -hmm. yeah because someone has big glats. But to me, a, a really strong back will have this more so pronounced funny. mid back. It's so funny it's very you say functional. that. I, so I picked up on that um, in my twenties. I, I worked out at the Gold's Gym for a little while on uh, Monterey. Uh, loved that Gold's. I don't think it's Gold's anymore. I think it was, it's called something else now. But great gym. And I, you know, there's you see a lot of hardcore lifters in there. And I remember there was one dude that worked out there, and his back was so impressive. He had this impressive traps and this back thickness and he wore these tank tops to work out and you know we work out at the same time so i'd see him all the time eventually we'd every you know we'd say hi to each other or whatever and i noticed he just had this incredible back thickness and i'd watch his workouts and almost all the exercises did for back were rows or some kind of a heavy deadlift or or trap bar deadlift or something like that so i never saw him do pull-ups never saw him do pull downs but he did lots and lots of rows and lots and lots of deadlifts now at the same time there was another dude that was in there that could do more pull-ups than I ever seen in my entire life, and do more pull-ups with more weight. This dude could strap a hundred pounds on his on his around his waist and do crazy pull-ups, and he could also rep out twenty-five pull-ups like no big deal. Totally different look to his back. Very wide. He had the wide-looking lats, yeah. but he lacked the thickness. Now I remember specifically paying attention to this two and thinking to myself, if I had to pick one, I'd want to look like the dude that did all the rows. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because those mid-back muscles are so functional for everyday life. Now, that's yeah. not to say pull-ups aren't functional. I think they're very functional. But I think that mid-back, pulling the shoulder blades back, keeping that upright posture, if you pull something, you tend to pull it towards your body rather than pulling yourself up. It's just a more functional, more powerful look. Well, I just love, too, those seated rows where you allow 
your shoulders to protract a bit, but you stabilize, uh, you know, your trunk and you're pulling back in. So it's like something where like trainers will come up and be like, you're doing it wrong uh, because you're supposed to keep your shoulders in that like neutral position and then only retract from there. But uh, for me, getting that full range of motion, I could really feel that. I think it's, I think it has a lot to do with posture. Mm -hmm. Like I think what what you're alluding to right now is like when you have, when you have that really good thick mid back, the the muscles that are typically underdeveloped in like upper cross syndrome yeah you're not hitting that end are range. fully developed yeah you know like so like a lot when you see somebody which is common right so majority of people listening actually suffer from upper cross syndrome at some at some extent of it and so with that you you tend to have these overactive tight you know delts and pec your pecs are tight and they're ruined and then you have a weaker mid upper back and so if you have a very strong developed mid upper back you probably have pretty damn good posture and it just looks good and it looks good that's right and you yeah. stand up and you see and you could man when you see someone like that that's in their, a t-shirt the way it hangs on mm-hmm. the back of their shirt you can see the traps in the mid back and they're upright you can have really and we've probably seen this before somebody who has really wide or you know good lats but still rolled forward yep oh yeah you know? you're right and, and poor posture like yep. you just you look don't... more confident and composed yeah. and when, when you have good posture one arm dumbbell rows are great too one arm dumbbell row with a little rotation to the top that hits that mid back any row that really focus on squeezing the shoulder blades back is going to give you that mid back development next question is from chai latte i find that my hands give in first during pull-ups deadlifts and some dumbbell exercises other than grabbing onto heavy weights what are other ways to train grip strength? Oh, did you, did you see my uh, my post or my questions? Someone asked me that, and I referred to what Justin does. Oh, wait, what did you say? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, he straps ankle weights to his wrist when he masturbates. <laughs> well, how did I know that you went there? That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like you at all, because well, it's the truth. That's yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you, you know me. I keep it real. You're not supposed to watch. Okay? That's something wrong with you. Oh, oh wait yeah. a minute. That's, That's what I'm saying. Now, yeah. you know, um, so this, this for me was a big deal back in the day. Back in the day when I used to work out, I would wear wrist uh, straps. Wrist straps go around your wrist, and then they go around the barbell or the bar that you're pulling or the dumbbells to help you hold on to them so that you could pull more weight, do more, you know, more weight on your movements or whatever. And I saw bodybuilders do them in magazines, so I did them for for a long time. And then I remember working out with somebody who followed my workout, didn't use any wrist straps and not only was as strong as I was, but he had much nicer looking arms. He had very well developed forearms. And I thought, gosh, you know what? It's I don't think I could hang with this guy unless I had on my wrist straps. So I took the wrist straps, I threw them away. And from that day forward, I said, if I can't hold on to the weight, then I'm not going to lift mm-hmm. that weight. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what happened. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to go much lighter for a while. It took a while. But eventually, my hands caught up, and now my hands are strong enough, if not stronger, than the rest of my body. Now, we're humans. We're, we're, we're part of the primate species or whatever, um, category of animals. We're supposed to have really strong, strong, strong hands. Yeah. We're not supposed to be able to lift things with other muscles that our hands can't hold on to. I think we just baby the hell out of our hands. So yeah. number one, obviously don't wear wrist straps. But if you're not wearing wrist straps and you're having a problem with this, what I think you should do is dedicate maybe 10 minutes at the end of two or three of your workouts to grip-specific exercises. There's a couple that I love doing. One is I like to hold a plate. I like to use a pinch grip. Pinch grip, yeah. Where I, I, I use just my fingertips on my thumb or my fingers are, are flat in my thumb. And I hold a weight just like that for static uh, tension. The other one that I like to do are heavy reverse curls, thumbless. So I put my thumb over the bar, monkey grip. I do reverse curls. That works the top of my forearm, but it also strengthens my grip to have to hold onto the bar. Mm -hmm. Just do those at the end of your workout for a few sets, maybe two or three days a week. That should give you the extra volume your hands need. We have some pretty cool exercises that we uh, highlighted around strengthening your hands and your grip in in our OCR program. And one of them is like really unconventional, but cheap to do is to buy uh, a bucket and put rice uh, in there and to right. to, go, to go through all these like rice bucket drills where your your hand is is going all the way down towards the bottom and it's pushing uh, the the rice away by splaying out your your fingers and then grabbing and gripping it as hard as you can and then splaying it out and so we go through various drills with that and it really does make a difference man my hands were were fatigued and uh, you know I could really feel uh, them being worked going through that part of it and then there's also tons of other ways that 
Sal mentioned the pinch grip. We have that in terms of like doing farmer walks with a pinch grip or just uh, hanging from the bar. So there's was, options like that. I was just going to refer to So I recently, um, I've been, because I, I've been having shoulder issues, and I think a lot of that is due to having Max and holding Max all the time like this, oh. and him getting heavier, and as much as I'm, I'm just not used to that, and my shoulders all roll forward, and so I'm getting all these issues. And one of the things that I've been doing to actually do that is before I start my workout or when I end it or whenever I can grab a bar, like we have one here in the, in the garage, I jump on it every now and then, and just do dead hangs. And one of the things that I'm noticing, even though I'm doing this for my shoulders, because that's great for like good shoulder health, right? It's like a, oh, great, yeah. a, a great exercise for those of you that are, are looking for good shoulder health is to do d dead hangs and just kind of hang there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm finding is my grip strength in my, my forearms are getting like these massive pumps. And I think about what Sal always talks about with trigger sessions and, you know, and how to work up like with pull-ups and things like that. Like, here's a great thing to do is go do a dead hang on a bar, time yourself to see when you, when you give out and then just, you know, frequently do that as much as you can throughout the day. If you have a bar or a, a, a two by four or a tree branch or something that you can just grab and consistently hang from and just like challenge yourself to add five more seconds, add 10 more seconds, you'll be blown away on how fast yeah, you can work up to. Now, if you don't normally do this, you got to be careful for overtraining, but you can work up to a tremendous amount of volume for your hands and your forearms, a tremendous amount of volume. Like I got to the point where I was doing judo or jujitsu training, which is very grip intensive, three, four days a week. Then on top of it, I was training my forearms three or four days a week and not wearing wrist straps and my hands and forearms were fine. You can work up to a tremendous amount of volume. And I tell you what, strong hands, strong grip will improve not just your back exercises, but your pressing movements as well. Mm -hmm. That strong wrist, that strong grip pos position when you bench press or overhead press, very important to your overall strength. If you don't believe me, next time you bench press, put like uh, knee wraps around your wrist to give you support and see how strong you feel. Now, what if you could do that naturally, right? So this is an important thing I think a lot of people should train. We were just talking about map strong earlier. Map strong will work the shit out of your grip. Oh yeah. That'll make you that'll give you some crazy strong hands. Really, really strong hands are important for strong men. So some of the exercise in there challenge the hell out of your grip, like the snatch grip high pulls. Like that makes your that puts your forearms on fire. Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. You guys say stay in a certain rep range for three to four weeks. How long should you stick with an exercise? before changing those up. Oh, it's, we addressed this not that long ago. We talked about uh, exercises because um, I think someone asked right after we talked about rip ranges. So it's it's been, but maybe it's been a while. And it really depends on the exercise that we're talking about. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I'll tell you myself personally how, how I do this is if it's like a high skill based thing, like squat, any sort of squat variation, deadlift variation, um, I rarely ever rotate those completely out like yeah. i know you're going through something right now sal which i've done this before where i like i stop barbell squatting for a while and i do all unilateral like i might do that every once in a while but it's not because i i'm afraid that i'm so adapted to squats i'm not getting results anymore it's more because like i'm addressing mobility like Correct. I, what you're doing or in some, some sort of an imbalance left or right when when it comes to these really high skill movements you may squat and deadlift the rest of your life and never be a master at it. Mm -hmm. Like it's really that, like it, it, go, it belongs in your routine all time. It's really a lot of the other movements that really need to be rotated in and out. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, your squats and your squat variations, deadlifts and deadlift variations. So that re that refers to sumo, conventional, trap bar, deadlift, uh, your, your bench presses and those variations, rows, overhead presses, those should almost always be in your routine unless you're addressing uh, some kind of an imbalance or an issue. Mm. Everything else you could you could cycle in and out. Bicep exercises, tricep exercises, isolation exercises. Those you can play with a little bit. Now, here's the thing, though. I still think you should stay with an exercise, even those isolation ones, unless you're advanced. Now, if you're advanced, you've been working out for years, then it's not a big deal. But if you're like most people and you're not super advanced with your training – I would say still stick with those isolation movements for a few weeks at least. Get good at them for three, four weeks before switching out. Minimum. Yeah. It, doesn't hurt. it won't hurt. If you're changing rep ranges and you're manipulating, like 
that stuff is way way bigger. I difference. think if you went from maps program to maps program, you would cycle through exercises appropriately because mm-hmm. each program is about twelve weeks long. Yeah. So probably twelve weeks would probably be the right answer for yeah. the ones well, cycling and, it up. And one thing that we do that I don't know if a lot of people even realize that we do in, in our programming is we look from even a higher perspective of have we incorporated enough moves in different planes of motion? Right, yeah. Have we incorporated enough rotational moves? Is, is it always, uh, you know, hammering this, this, this same sagittal plane, which most people just get stuck in there. So, you know, that's something we are conscious of that and making sure that there's enough of that thrown in uh, to, to make sure that your joints are still well and healthy and able to stabilize properly. This is why I think that performance and strong, because the, the two of them are really addressed what you're what you're alluding to right now just if you don't own those in your collection of whatever maps programs you're following you're you're probably missing out on a, a big component or piece because when we did when we looked at all of them the you know anabolic and aesthetic and split and PED you know they address a lot of the bodybuilding type right. of you know sagittal plane type of movements which you know great for everybody trying to sculpt and build and shape and build your metabolism all those great things burn body fat but for overall health, joint health, uh, being functional, um, it, it's very important that you incorporate the unconventional type movements, anti-rotational stuff, multi-planar movements. Like those are really addressed well in in performance and in strong, in my opinion. Yeah, and you and you also you know here's one other thing about exercises. Before you can really start to reap the maximum benefit of an exercise, you got to kind of get to the point where you're good at it. Not super good at it, but good enough to where you could exert maximal force. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, if I do a new exercise, let's say, let's say I've never done an upright row before for my shoulders, never done it before. It's gonna take me at least, and, and, and let's say I'm already fit, so I already work out, right? It's gonna take me at least a couple weeks just to get good mm-hmm. at upright rows, and then when I start to get good at them and really feel what I'm supposed to feel and really be able to exert force, uh, now I'm gonna maximize. Now I'm gonna get the benefits. Now I'm gonna get the real benefits of the exercise. So it's like it's like when I teach someone how to barbell squat, it takes a while before they can squat to the point where then we can start pushing weight right. and, and building muscle. For a while it's just getting good at the exercise. So consider that as well. And now advanced people, people who have a lot of experience, they really know how to move well, they've been working out for a long time, they can kind of get away with switching exercises in and out because they can jump into an exercise and be good at it. You know, they can they can do a shoulder press and be good at it. They can do a row and be good at it. They can but a lot of people need at least a couple weeks, uh, you know, maybe a few weeks at least, to get to the point where they can get comfortable with the exercise, comfortable enough to where they can push it and then reap the the real. I, benefits. I mean, I, I love if if you don't own our maps programs, I love that structure though. I, I really sure. do that. You you should stick to an exercise for twelve weeks, and in that twelve weeks, you should manipulate things like rep ranges, sets, and tempo and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, good, good Like advice. stick to the extra the stick the stick to the exercises for at least three months. Right. But manipulate the other variables that can can o- progressively overload the body. So you don't need to change the exercises that often. And, and to Sal's point, that becomes more even more important the, the more new you are. You'd have to be a very very advanced person for me to even think it's a good idea for you to be changing it. Yeah, by I'm the talking week. about like five years of, of consistent yeah. lifting. Like yeah, really and, and only then. And honestly, then I still don't think it's a superior way of lifting. No. I think it's like if someone said you can I'm, get away with right it. exactly. If someone said like, hey, I just don't like doing the same exercises mm-hmm. for four weeks straight at them. Is can I drop you know switch this for that or okay yeah you're advanced you can jump right into a front squat and fire it the way I want you to you know that you can lunge Bulgarian you can do everything already really well. Like, okay, go ahead and play with it for sanity reasons. But for good programming reasons, I think that minimum you should stick to a mm-hmm. exercises at least a few months to get really, really good at it and then manipulate the other okay. variables. Yeah, when I throw in a new exercise now, I do at least that. So yeah. if I say, okay, like right now, um, I'm going to be doing trap bar deadlifts instead of, uh, you know, straight bar deadlifts. That means I'm going to be doing them now for the next right. two you've months. Been do- you've been doing lunges yeah. for quite some time. Yeah, and, and I'm already starting to go back to squats now. Right. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Progman2012. How do you know when it's time to reverse diet? That's a really good question. Yeah, so, so for the audience that's listening right now, a reverse diet literally means you're slowly increasing your calories with the intention of speeding up your metabolism, building muscle, um, and getting to a point to where then you can cut calories from a higher calorie percentage or higher calorie point so it's easier to burn body fat. So 
to give you an example, it'd be like a, a woman, let's say her, her, if she had to eat 1500 calories a day in order to stay the same way. Well, we could cut her down to 1200, but not much lower you can go than that. Or I could reverse diet her and add strength training, get her to the point where her body's burning now 2200 calories. Now I've got room to go when I cut that person. But I guess the, yeah, but the question of course is how do I know? When's a good time to reverse I, I have a, you know, I have something for that. First, I'm going to make a statement that's a total overgeneralization, but I think for the majority it stands that I, I think most people should start here, regardless of your goal, regardless, whether it's to to build muscle, to stay this maintain, just increase performance, or you know, for sure lose body fat. Uh, I think most people. If, especially if you haven't been tracking, you haven't been really doing anything consistently with your diet as far as being regimen, uh, I think one of the first things that you should do is to reverse diet. Most people, we naturally do this thing where we, um, you know, we uh, res we don't eat for long periods of time and then we, we, we splurge. We don't eat, we splurge. And there's not a lot of consistency with the way you're eating and doing a real good structured reverse diet kind of gives you that. And in my experience, almost every client that I've ever trained, uh, when we first evaluate uh, their calorie intake, especially my women, are almost always eating relatively low. Even if these, I'm looking at a client that's 100 pounds overweight, you know, most of them have already tried dieting uh, themselves so many times that they, they've actually slowed down their metabolism and they're at a very low calorie intake. And my goal was always this. So I would tell them, listen, my goal is to, to slowly increase calories into your diet while also manipulating and changing your programming so that you know those extra calories get partitioned over to building muscle and they don't get stored as fat. But my goal is to do that until you get to a point where you, where you go from somebody who just kind of eats a few times a day to where you look at me and go like, Adam, Adam, this is becoming a job. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm tired of eating this much. Mm. You've got me eating so much, I don't want to eat this much. What and, a great position. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's exactly where I want a client who needs to lose weight to get. Because if I get them there, then when I say, all right, excellent. Now, Susie, I want you to drop one meal. She's like, oh, thank God. Yeah. And yeah. then what does she get? She gets these great results right away because I've now – naturally cut out three, 400 calories. I think this is going to be such a big uh, story in mainstream, uh, you know, science and nutrition science, uh, The that the body has this incredible ability to become more or less efficient with calories. And that can equate to a lot. Like you could take somebody who's a POW and when they take these people who've been, you know, in a camp or, or in prison for a long period of time, fed very, very little, their body's adapted to be able to, to operate on incredibly low calories. You can also reverse diet people and get them to burn. I've had female clients, no joke, where we do this process and we get them to burn 800 more calories a day mm -hmm. uh, and they're burning body fat while they're eating 800 more calories a day. I mean, it's crazy the body's capacity to do this. So this is actually a very valuable strategy it just takes time yeah so it's not you don't lose weight right away when you do it this way you gotta it's like you're it's like you're setting yourself up for the fat loss right you're setting yourself up for the big fat loss and then you're setting yourself up to make it more permanent or easier to stick with because you know if you're eating a ton now cutting from there is easy if you're not eating that much now cutting from there's Really, really hard. And that's well, rare. I yeah. Mean, how many times did you guys remember getting, I remember literally, I could count on one hand, how many times I got the really overweight client who sat down and I said, be completely honest, tell me everything you eat. And they're like, so I had, you know, McDonald's for, for breakfast and then I had this milkshake in the afternoon and then I had a, a large pizza to myself and then, and they're eating like 7,000 yeah. bad calories. You, like, there are people like that. Yeah, there are. Yeah. They exist. I mean, like I said, a handful of them I've trained in, in the, you know, two decades of training clients. And mm -hmm. I tell you what, those are the easiest. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you just change, oh, just reduce. Yeah, yeah, you just change <laughs> yeah. some of those choices, and yeah. all of a sudden they just weight falls off them. But that's not what most people hire me because they've already been trying this shit on their own for many years mm -hmm. and have failed, and they're they're lost. They're like, listen, Adam, this is what I eat. Why am I still overweight? I don't understand. And so the first thing that I have to do with them is to reverse diet them and then slow. And it's, you know, I would love to see it take off. I would love to see this being the way that like trainers take on a new client. Like this is the protocol. This is the, to really build up the metabolism to take them through this process of, you know, like paying attention to the timing of their, their eating to, to really ramp it to a point where, like you said, this is, this is a bit much. This is like a chore. And now, even if the goal 
is to lose weight and to lose body fat. We're in such a better position long term than we were starting out. And I think that it really is the biggest barrier is psychological. Yeah, uh, for sure. People, yes. people just don't want to hear that because it because they already have these expectations coming in that they want to just shed everything off. Dude, you get a client who's like, I'm going to hire you for 30 sessions. I want to lose 20 pounds. You're like, okay, we're not going to lose any weight for four months. For four months, the goal is to speed up your metabolism. That's a hard sell. You have to be a very confident trainer, um, and you have to be able to explain yourself very well. But it's a much better strategy. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is we don't move much, but we're also busy, and there's a lot of food all around us. Yeah. So you're better off with a faster metabolism. Now, for hunter-gatherers, and there's not a lot of food around us, I'd be like, don't make your metabolism faster. You need to be able to survive on a little bit of calories. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way you know we live today. Today, if you have a very, very fast metabolism, you are at an advantage, and reverse dieting helps uh, make that happen. But it does need to be programmed with a good workout that's, help that's geared towards uh, muscle building. Look, on this episode, you heard us refer to MAPS Strong, Map Strong is a program that does exactly that. It's a phenomenal metabolism boosting, muscle building uh, program. It's exceptional. In fact, uh, some of our most arduent followers of it are women who notice exactly that from following the program. And the program is 50% off right now. You just got to go to mapsstrong.com and use the code STRONG50. That's S T R O N G 50. Also, the podcast is recorded on video as well as audio. So if you like listening to us, Imagine how much you like us when you look at us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Imagine. We got faces made for podcasts, let me tell you. Uh, anyway, you can find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Also, we have a bunch of free guides if you'd like to learn more about muscle building, fat loss, uh, developing specific parts of your body. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Bunch of free information for you. We created it just to provide more value for our listeners.